Maybe you have uh, been hearing about Revival. Maybe you have read social media posts, people's thoughts, people's opinions. Maybe you've spent some time yourself wondering what's going on at Asbury University Seminary there in Wilmore, Kentucky. Maybe you have experienced Revival in your own life. Uh, I don't know where you're at, but I just want to bring a word of encouragement to you because revival is possible. Revival is eminent. Revival is the heart of God. When the people of God, their heart is in alignment with the heart of God, remarkable things happen. And in Joel chapter 2, I want to I want to read some verses to you. The Bible says, Now therefore says the Lord, This is the word of God. He says, turn to me. Turn to me with all your heart, with fasting and with weeping and with mourning. We're hearing testimonies of college students. We're hearing testimonies of universities, of young people walking into rooms and being so overwhelmed with the presence of God, the spirit of God and the peace of God that they are just weeping. They're they're sitting down, they're kneeling down, they're unable to do anything but weep. This is revival. This is what God says. He says, come to me, turn to me with your whole heart and fast and weep and mourn. So rend your heart, not your garments. This This is not an outward religious thing. This is talking about a matter of the heart. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and of great kindness, and he relents from doing harm. Who knows if he will turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, a grain offering and a drink offering for the Lord your God? But worship is what his heart desires, that he would be worshiped, that he would be given the preeminence in our hearts. Blow the trumpet, the Bible says, in Zion. Consecrate a fast. Call a sacred assembly. Gather the people. Sanctify the congregation. This is about a holy gathering. This is about the heart of people to be with God, just to be with him just to get together and be with him. And this revival that we're hearing about, one person said it like this, this belongs to Jesus and this belongs to Gen Z. And some of you say, well, who's Gen Z? Gen Z is 11 to 26 year olds. That's who's leading the charge right now. So when we were praying for revival and contending for revival, we were praying for, for our campuses in Gen X, praying for Gen Y, Gen Y praying for millennials, millennials praying for Gen Z. So many people think Gen Z is hopeless. Gen Z is this. Gen Z is that. <laughs> Look who God's using. Look who the, the presence of the Lord has fallen upon. The Bible says in Joel chapter 2, verse 28, And it shall come to pass afterward, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, God says. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. (laughs) Young people, Gen Z, right? Listen to this. Old men shall dream dreams. Young men shall see visions. Maid servants, men servants. God says, I'll pour out my spirit in those days. The thing about revival is, it's, it's always going to look different. Different things are going to happen at Revival. Leonard Raven, Ravenhill probably wrote more about Revival than any other person that I've ever known of. The English preacher, he said that no Revival is a carbon copy. Different things are going to happen at different Revivals. Different <laughs> young people, old people, servants, daughters prophesying, different things happening. I will show wonders in the heavens and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke, God says. The sun shall be turned into darkness, the moon into blood before the coming of the great and awesome day of the Lord. 
And it will come to pass that whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. But in Mount Zion and Jerusalem, there shall be deliverance, as the Lord has said, among the remnant whom the Lord calls. God always has a remnant. He always has his people that he's going to use, that he's going to use to usher in revival, that he's going to meet with. But it never looks the same. It always looks different. In fact, for me in my life, I, I can think back on seasons where I was seeking the Lord and contending for revival. And he met me in those places. I can think about times where I was not seeking the Lord and not, not in contending for revival. And he still chose to show up in my life. I think about a time that I was in a church in Claremont, Florida, and I was there for like two or three hours just worshiping the Lord. And all of a sudden I, I felt a, a heat. I felt a fire come over my feet and come over my legs and up to my waist. And, and I was, I felt like my entire lower body was on fire as I was worshiping the Lord. And in that moment, at that exact moment, I was experiencing that the pastor of the church looked out at the whole congregation, hundreds of people there. And he pointed at me and he said, man of God, come up here. And tell us what God's doing in your life. And, and he called me out of everybody. And I felt the fire of God in my life. I remember being in Guatemala and just so wanting the Lord, just so desiring the Lord's presence. And I was worshiping in a local church in Guatemala and I didn't speak the language. But I remember the presence of God was so thick in that place. It was so heavy that, that it was like a glory cloud was in that place. I remember not wanting to leave. I remember being overwhelmed on my knees, just crying to God, the presence of God. I remember being in a parking lot. In Brooklyn Park, when a man, I don't even know, I never met him before, came up and knew so much about my life and prophesied over me and laid his hands on me and prayed and the Holy Spirit and the power of God came on my life and I spoke in tongues. I can tell you, you guys, that the, the revival that we're talking about, it's going to look different in every situation. It looks different right now in Asbury as it does in other places. It looks different on Lee University than it does in other places, but I want to tell you it is possible. I mentioned earlier Leonard Ravenhill. Listen to this quote from Leonard Ravenhill. Without question, the greatest need of this hour is that the church shall meet her ascended Lord again and get an endowment that would usher in the revival of revivals just before the night of nights settles over this age of incomparable corruption. We live in an age of incomparable corruption. But here's the thing. Jesus Christ is still the same yesterday, today, and forever. And he is still on his throne. And I want to challenge you right now, wherever you are watching this video, I want to challenge you to pray for Gen Z. I want to challenge you to pray by name for 11 to 26 year olds right now. I want to challenge you to pray for Asbury. I want to challenge you to pray for these schools in Kentucky, for the Passion Movement. For, for all of the college students around the country that claim the name of Jesus, that these revivals, that the presence of God that's fallen would pour out into the streets and that we would see a great awakening again in the United States of America and in the world. I want to tell you like this. God is doing something unlike we have seen. God is doing something, and even in my heart, reminding me you used to believe for these things. You used to pray for these things. You used to seek my face for these things. What happened? You got too busy. You had too much going on. You have too many excuses, too many idols. Now is the time to repent and come back to your first love. Be encouraged, saints. Be encouraged, friends. I love you. I pray that this finds you well. And that you would have a fire for God and that I would have a fire for God like never before and that we would meet with him in fasting and in weeping and in mourning and in sacred assembly and he would work a work in our days unlike we have ever seen in Jesus name. Amen.